Welcome to the iCracked iPhone 5 Display Assembly Replacement Tutorial video. One of the first things we want to do when we, before we just replace the display assembly is test all the functions of the phone. So let's go ahead and tap the power button, make sure the screen lights up, go ahead and open it. Let's plug in the charging cable. The phone should indicate that it's been plugged in. The battery will turn green and you receive a lightning port. Now one thing I want to do is make sure the percentage climbs, so let's go ahead and turn on battery percentage. If I go to settings, general, usage, slide to the bottom and turn on battery percentage. Now my phone is at 90% and we want to make sure it climbs at least 1 or 2%. So we want to test every function of the phone and so this one here want to make sure that we have good Wi-Fi signal so let's go into Wi-Fi and we have good Wi-Fi signal it's connected I'll go ahead and go to Safari open a page make sure data is coming down okay that's good I'm gonna go ahead and test the front camera the rear camera along with the rear microphone and the front microphone by doing that I can open up the camera app, slide this over to video, and record a simple video. Test one, two, three, three, two, one. That's on the rear camera. I'll flip this around and do the same thing for the front camera. Test one, two, three, three, two, one. Go ahead and play back those videos. Make sure your volume is turned all the way up. One, two, three, three, okay. two. On the front facing camera video, we know that the top front microphone is working. Now we'll play the video we did on the rear facing camera. One, two, three, three, two, one. So this lets me know that the rear microphone located right there is working. And because we heard it, we know the loudspeaker is working as well. Now we want to test the front lower microphone and do that by recording a message via voice memo. So we're going to open voice memo. Test one, two, three, three, two, one. Save the recording and play it back. Okay. Now I want to test the ear speaker during voice memo. I can press the speaker icon to turn it gray and that will transfer audio to the ear speaker and at the same time while I'm listening to the ear speaker I can look at the screen and make sure it goes dark telling me that the proximity sensor and ambient light sensor is working. So I'm going to simulate if this was up to my ear the screen would go dark and when I release it comes back up. You see my battery is up at 91%, so we know the phone is charging. Now one thing you want to do is make sure that you don't have any excessive frame damage that is going to prevent you from attaching a new display assembly. One thing you want to do is get a nice flat level surface to set the phone on. Take something as simple as a post-it note and go around the phone. If the post-it note slips under the frame, that would indicate that the frame is damaged, bent, or twisted. In this case, we have no frame damage. The most common areas to get frame damage is right at the volume down button and right at the SIM card tray. Any frame damage in those areas will affect how a new display assembly goes onto the phone. If you try to force a display assembly onto a frame that's bent or twisted, you're going to have problems and you will have no warranty with iCracked because we know that the bend is going to force the glass to separate from the plastic bezel and it could cause issues such as what we call phantom touching which is where the phone thinks someone is actually touching the screen when nothing is touching the screen it could cause flickering of the screen as well so now that I've determined there's absolutely no frame damage on this one, I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the repair. The last thing we want to do before we turn the phone off 
is to close any Oplin applications by double tapping the home button, swipe in all the apps to make sure they're closed, and that the only thing left is the home row. Go ahead and power down the phone by pressing the home button, and swipe to turn off. Included in your do-it-yourself repair kit is a bag of tools. We'll go over some of these tools. First, you have a microfiber cloth for cleaning off fingerprints, a ESD safe nylon spudger, a flathead screwdriver, a pentalobe screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, a suction cup for lifting the screen. You can go ahead and throw this adhesive away if you're working on an iPhone 5. You also get a plastic pry tool and a single guitar pick. Now the first step in repairing this phone is to remove the two pentalobe screws located both left and right of the charging port. We'll go ahead and remove these two screws, set them aside. Um, if you have a refrigerator magnet or a couple of them, I'd suggest you use those to put your screws on to help keep them organized. There's not a whole lot of screws involved with the iPhone 5, so it's easy to keep them together. Now that I have the two pencil of screws out, I can go ahead and open the screen. There are several ways of opening the screen. One is to place a suction cup just above the home button to grab, but as you see this screen so badly cracked, I'm not going to get suction on it. So what I'm going to want to do is apply a piece of packing tape, uh, maybe two or three layers, just enough so that all the cracks are filled, and then apply that suction cup to open it. If you've done repairs before and you have an iSESMO tool, you could take the iSESMO tool and insert it directly above the audio jack port and pop the screen up, but you have to be careful to not catch the audio jack flex cable. And another way is with the tool we call the iSchlack. Now this tool is sold in our store, which it has two suction cups that clamps to the screen and then allows you to open it. But again, with a badly cracked screen, you're not going to be able to get suction on that top one. You see that one's fairly easy. I just popped it and the display assembly came off. Now if I was using just a standard suction cup, I would put the some tape across the screen. Just like that. Apply my suction cup. Then take and gently put your fingers on the outside of the frame and gently lift the screen up. Using the plastic pry tool you can get in directly above the audio jack and lift the screen just like so. Once you have the bottom opened up you can very gently lift the phone up to where you can set the screen like such. Now that we have the screen lifted up let's go ahead and remove our suction cup. The first thing we're going to do is remove the plate and disconnect the battery. So the plate has two halves, we're only going to remove the lower half, which is this plate here, so it's this screw and this screw. Now that that plate's removed, our next step is to disconnect the battery. Now along this edge of the battery connector are several surface mount components, so we don't want to damage those. When you disconnect the battery, you don't want to dig down into the logic board itself. You want to just catch the edge of the battery here and gently pop it off. Now that the battery is disconnected, we're going to move up to the top of the phone and remove the EMI shield 
which has three screws here, here, and here. Now this upper screw is made out of an alloy, uh, it, so it's non-magnetic. So you may have to use a pair of tweezers to pull this one screw up. Now, if you have a magnetizer, you can magnetize your screwdriver, and then it will pick up that screw most of the time. There we go. Go ahead and remove the other two screws here. And lastly, we're going to remove the EMI shield itself. Now, the EMI shield has three clips that slide into the logic board over here. So we want to gently push that to the side and lift. You see, there's those three hooks right there. Once those are disconnected, you want to disconnect the display assembly from the logic board. The first one we're going to do is the camera cable. And again, there's several small surface mount components on the logic board. So we don't want to dig into the logic board. We want to just get under the connector itself and disconnect it. There's the camera cable, LCD, and then the digitizer. Now that those are disconnected, we can set the frame aside, and then we'll work just on the, on the display assembly itself, because there's several components here that have to be moved over to the replacement screen. As you can see, we have the original screen here, and then the replacement screen. So we're gonna have to remove the ear speaker, ear speaker bracket, front-facing camera cable, home button flex cable, home button bracket, home button, and thermal plate over to here. So let's start off by removing all the components on the new display assembly. We're gonna start off with removing the two screws that hold the ear speaker bracket into place. The top screw is an extremely long screw. The bottom screw is short. Once those two screws are removed, go ahead and lift the bracket out, then lift the ear speaker out. If you notice here, you have the front facing camera cable, which also houses the ambient light sensor, proximity sensor, upper microphone, and connections for the ear speakers. So we're going to have to remove this cable. There's a little bit of adhesive underneath these connections that hold it into the bezel. So we're going to go in here very gently and release that adhesive and fold the cable back. Now that the cable is folded back, we'll go ahead and disconnect the microphone just by simply sliding your spudger underneath and separating it. Take that cable and set it aside. Now, inside the screen, you're also going to have the little plastic cover here which is to level the ear speaker and then you're gonna have the rubber boot for the automatic light sensor and then on the black screens only you're gonna have this little filter right here now the easiest way to remove that filter is to take the flathead screwdriver place it on the inside edge and gently twist. That will slide the filter out of place. If you have to, you can remove that front facing camera ring and grab the filter, just like that. The first thing I do is I put this right into the new display assembly so that it doesn't get lost. So I'll lay it right where it belongs. Next, we're going to remove the home button bracket along with the home button flex cable. To remove the home button and home button bracket, <coughs> you're going to use a Phillips screwdriver on the two screws left and right of the bracket. Now, the home button flex cable 
is attached to the underside of this bracket. So you have to be very careful when peeling this off. One trick I do is I use an Isesmo tool and I'll get underneath here and pull that off. But if you don't have an Isesmo, you can take a hair dryer, heat up this side of the screen so to loosen the adhesive up and then use the nylon spudger included to gently peel up this cable like so. Or you can take the flatbed screwdriver dig underneath the cable also but this is a high risk and could potentially damage this cable. Should this cable tear your home button will not function and you'll have to replace the flex cable itself. So I'm going to use my Sesmo here dig underneath just like that and remove this whole piece. Next I'm going to remove the home button itself by taking my nylon spudger peeling off any tape that I have put over the front. I'm going to take the flat end press it up against the top of the home button and very gently push through and peel the home button off. I'm going to immediately transfer this to my replacement display assembly so it doesn't get lost. Just like that. Flip it over, make sure the square is level. If not, then go ahead and pick it back up and reseat it. There we go. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is remove the thermal plate using the Phillips screwdriver. There are a total of six screws up here at the top of the thermal plate, down here at the bottom, two on the left and right side. I'm going to take these screws off and set them in the order in which I took them out. The top and bottom screws are different sizes, but all four side screws are the same. Now that the six screws are out for the thermal plate, I'm going to go ahead and remove the thermal plate just by lifting it up. I'm going to take it over to the new display assembly. I'm going to very gently remove this ESD protective film, just like such. And then take the thermal plate and put it back onto the display by lining up the left side and dropping it onto the right side. I'm going to put the top and bottom screw back in just so that I know the plate is aligned. Now if your screwdriver is not picking up the screws very well, you may need to recharge this. Uh, there are several ways you can do it. You can rub a refrigerator magnet, that will transfer magnetism over to this. Or if you have a magnetizer, which we do sell in our store. Or place it on the back of a large speaker. Notice I'm not applying any pressure. I'm not forcing this thermal plate down. I'm just letting it sit naturally and placing the six screws back in. If you force the screw thermal plate down and uh, put it together, you could apply too much pressure to the LCD and it'll cause a halo effect around the screen from the excessive pressure because it's actually squishing the LCD assembly itself. Now the thermal plate's back on, our next step is going to be placing the front facing camera accessory cable back into the frame. Doesn't matter which order you do this, you could do the home button or the camera. So I'm going to press the uh, microphone boot, the microphone into the microphone boot. You'll see a little circle and it just pops right in. Now I'm going to take the 
light sensor, rubber gasket, and I'm going to place it over the ambient light sensor like so, or you can place it down inside the body here so that you should just see a circle. Then I'm going to take the ear speaker leveling bracket, which is this little plastic piece here, and I'm going to set it over the aluminum block here so the area on the back of the bracket will overhang on the back side. I'm just going to drop it in place, press it down. Then I'm going to take the cable and I'm going to drop the proximity sensor right here into the proximity sensor bracket, ambient light sensor into this gasket, and then the front facing camera cable into the front facing camera cable bracket. When it's all in, everything should feel nice and level and shouldn't have any waves or bumps. And sometimes it'll sit here and fight you. There we go. Okay, now that everything is dropped into place, my automatic ambient light sensor is in place, my ear speaker leveling plate's in place, proximity sensor is dropped into the bracket. Then I'm going to go ahead and take the ear speaker and place it into place. Now, the bottom of the ear speaker has this little oval area that drops into the rubber boot located right here. So I'll go ahead and press that into place. Just like that. I'm going to take the ear speaker bracket, lay it over the top of the ear speaker, and then I'm going to start with the really long screw at the top, pass it through, and thread it. I'm not going to tighten it all the way because I want to get the bottom screw in also. and then go ahead and tighten these. Now when you tighten these screws, you're not forcing them, you're just tightening them enough to where they stop. And then if you look at it, here, everything should be nice and level. Next I'm gonna take my home button flex with bracket, line it up at the bottom, press the flex cable down, and insert and tighten the two screws that hold the bracket to the display assembly. Now that the bracket's in, I want to go ahead and press the flex cable down onto the plastic bezel and I want to test my home button, make sure I have that same click I had before. If this feels very tight or doesn't move, there could be uh, dust or d dirt, debris, or glass stuck behind this bracket, in which case you just take it off, clear it, and then reinsert it. Now that everything's transferred over to my dis new display assembly, then I'm going to reattach it to the phone. Now that we're ready to connect the display assembly back to the logic board, we're going to take the screen and we're going to pre-fold the cables by placing our thumb right next here and then gently fold the cables over till they touch the thermal plate. This will allow the top two cables to stay up out of your way and then the digitizer cable has easy access. Now when you connect these connections you don't want to force the connection. You're going to put your finger or spudger down on here till you feel the cable drop and then press it and you should feel almost a double click. If the connection is fighting you, make sure that the actual connection isn't damaged or bent. So now that we have the digitizer on, we're, next we're going to connect the LCD. The same manner, you're going to slightly tilt the screen toward you.
line it up and press it down again you're going to feel almost a double snap now the most difficult connection is this one here for the front facing camera and accessory cable typically what what we see is when you're trying to connect this is the digitizer the LCD will pop off so what we'll do is we'll gently use our finger to slide the cable using our spudger to align until we feel it drop into place this can take you several minutes it can be very difficult to attach once all three cables are attached we're just going to gently take our finger and push down on all three of them and make sure they're seated and if you notice the screen is tilted slightly forward to give me that access next we're going to take the EMI shield that holds all these cables into place and we're going to hook it on the edge inside here and then slide it till it locks and all three screw holes are aligned just like that then take and put our screws back in I like to start with the magnetic screws first. I'll get the bottom screw in. That way I can let go of that. Put the middle screw in. And lastly, we'll put the non magnetic screw. I like to get a pair of tweezers, grab the screw, and then drop it into place. Okay, now that I got it dropped into place. I'll go ahead and tighten it and since I have a freshly charged magnet a screwdriver it'll pick up the screwdriver pretty well next I'm just going to reconnect the battery onto the logic board now I'm going to test the display assembly before I fully put the bracket and close and lock everything down so I'm going to go ahead and power on the phone Verify I have an Apple logo. And let it boot up. What I'm checking for is to make sure I have a proper display and that my touch screen is working. If the uh, digitizer connector which controls your touch is only partially seated or not seated, you may see checker box patterns all over the screens or fine lines going top to bottom. Okay, so my display looks perfect. Then I'm going to grab an icon by placing my finger on there until all the icons start dancing. And then I'm going to take that icon and move it all over the screen. If the icon drops, that could indicate a dead spot or that my digitizer connection isn't seated correctly. Now that I'm satisfied that my touch is working and my display is working, then I'm going to power down the phone again and complete the installation. Now that the phone is off, I'm going to take the bracket, place it back over the battery connector here. So the circle loop will go up toward the top, just like that. And then go ahead and put the two screws back into a place. Hopefully you kept your screws very well organized and that they go into the same place you took them out because almost all the screws are different sizes and shapes. These two screws are pretty easy to, to tell the difference. The uh, center screw is the longer one. Now that both screws are in, the brackets screwed in all the way, then we're going to close the assembly and then test. Now when you place the display assembly onto the frame, you're going to take the top section and make sure that these notches here fall into the frame itself. So I'll hold it about a 20 degree angle like that at the top 
and then close the bottom of the phone just like that and then run your fingers up the sides so it's always top bottom and then sides the display assembly is a very snug fit inside the frame if you went to the top and tried to walk it up then your bottom is going to protrude beyond the frame so when you do do the top and then the bottom there will be a very slight bow which will allow you to press down and then snap into the clips which sit within the frame. Now that the display is back on, we're going to go ahead and turn it back on and then test everything on the phone. Now that the phone's booted up, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and go in here, make sure our home button works. If the home button is not functioning, that could mean that you damaged the flex cable attached on the underside or you may have damaged the little springs that make contact onto that cable. Since the home button is functioning, I'll go ahead and proceed with again retesting the rear and front cameras and again recording a video. Test one, two, three. Flip the camera over to the front. Test one, two, three. Playback both videos. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. So that tested the rear mic and the front mic, which is part of the camera cable we moved over, so we know that the camera and all that function in the mic it wasn't damaged. And the last thing you do is to record a voice memo to test the lower mic and the ambient light and proximity sensor. Test one, two, three. Save the recording, play it back. Make sure that the speaker up here is blue so it sends audio to the loudspeaker. One, two, three. And then go ahead and touch that speaker icon so it's gray. Listen to it to test your ear speaker and when you put the phone up to your face, the screen should dim. And again, we're gonna test the touch screen one last time by grabbing the icon and moving it around. If the icon drops that can indicate a problem. So this one was satisfactory. Want to make sure that it picked up Wi-Fi signal. My battery is now at 85%. I want to make sure that I didn't damage the charge port while doing this. So I plugged in the charger phone is at 85% battery and that uh, I have a green battery indicated it's charging and a lightning bolt up here also indicating it's charging. I'm going to check my brightness, make sure I can go full bright, full dim. That tells me that the ambient light sensor is fully functioning. I'm going to go ahead and test my volume up, volume down and the mute. When I flip the mute I should get that icon and the phone should vibrate. Now that my battery is up to 86 percent I know my phone is charging. I'm satisfied everything's done. I'm going to put the phone to sleep, disconnect my charge cable, and put the two pencil lobe screws back into the frame. There you go, your phone looks as good as new.